Hello. Um, I got a couple tips on narcissists. I guess I can um, think of a couple things here. Uh, that right now, if you're going to be around one, say like tonight or something, they are right now planning some kind of a question to ask you. Or if you knew about something or... Um, did you know this in the news or what do you think about that and no matter what you answer it doesn't matter it's going to turn into an argument so the best thing you can do is say I don't feel like talking right now and it really is the best thing you can do is just cut it off right there and if they say well I want to know your opinion or um, um, why can't you answer me um, you can say, because God told me not to. And um, if they say, well, uh, seems like you're scared to answer me or something, and just frankly tell them I don't have to defend myself, my honor, my words, nothing with you. And anything I say will lead to an uh, argument, so we're not going to be talking. And that's really simple. That's about like that. That's what I can tell you. It does work. I mean, if you don't want to talk, you don't want to talk, right? So, um, that's that. Because it is, uh, you know, it gets on your nerves. And part of their plan is, too, in the evening time when you digest your food. If they can upset you anytime you're eating. That's good for them because um, they uh, will do and say anything to disrupt your natural digestion tract, and that is um, upset will do that. It'll make it so you can't digest your food properly. Um, let's see on that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get a cup of coffee and think here. Take you with me. I don't think I'll get cut off, but I'll just tell you right now. God bless your day. Mine's been pretty good. It's um getting around sundown, but it's been kind of off and on rainy all day. I'll show you. A little cloudy up in there. Had a duck out on the pond this morning, so her mate was probably there too, but for her, so. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. Um, let me think. Hmm, give me a moment. Excuse me. Cheers. Oh, boy. Yeah, I love the rain anyway because um, I wouldn't if I was at the beach, but then I don't have to water my flowers as much, so to keep them alive. And we're pretty fortunate in this state. We're never too much of a shortage of water, so um, that's a really big deal. It's a great big aquifer. Um, under our house, there's artesian wells, and they they go so deep, there's just no, no end to it, into the earth. Um... Let's see, what else would they do? Hmm. Mm. There's a big one. Especially a drinker. Like if you say, would you like something for supper? Well, you know I don't eat much. Okay, but that didn't answer my question. You know, um, now I've gotten to where this is where it is with me. I usually make something, but if I don't, that's just too bad. And don't whine about it. I'm not your slave. Um, you know, learn how to cook. Oh, that was funnier than heck. Uh, Doug comes home and tells me about this guy that had uh, looked at me wrong decades ago. And um, just a little flip and twerp at a hardware store. A little piece of crap. And uh, he uh, had to go, and he's like 72 years old, making pizzas at a Casey's um, gas station. And I'm like, good. 
should work till you're 72 years old. I started when I was nine years old. I literally went, had a, a Star and Tribune paper out. Well, I started helping when I was nine, and then I took it over when I was 12. And then when I was 12, I also worked for a nursery school that year, and the paper got, route got really hard, I have to honestly admit, because our Sunday papers were like just flipping thick, and I had 72 customers, so I was a paper girl for a season, the summer, when winter came, it was getting kind of rough. So that fall, I started in a bakery, cleaning the bakery after all the bakers had gone home. So um, I did that until it got cold out. And, and I was able to work there another time because uh, I had found a wallet in the store when I was a little kid. And it just so happened to belong to one of the owners in a... Uh, super value store and so I had a job for life anytime I wanted as long as if I was going to take off that I gave notice which I did I was going back out to Montana one time when I was 18 and I was like hey I'm going to be taking off you guys and they're like well we are sorry to see you go and the door is always open and I got that a lot in my life because of my integrity and, um, yeah, I usually am pretty polite, especially in a business sense. But this is, well, this is deeper than business. This is like uh, my soul business. Um, okay, thinking about what else would they do. Um, mm, oh, odd habits like scraping a plate and smacking lips I mean not your normal funny crunch 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 like on a pretzel or something just or a cracker I love crackers too um but uh just uh unusual noises <clears throat> unusual <clears throat> unusual um like dropping of keys or jiggling of money. Here, I'll give you a, a fabulous example. I was up at the casino in uh, Hinkley, Minnesota, Grand Casino Hinkley, where I worked. This little lady named Barb in the um, jewelry and gift shop. And she... Um, was having trouble with a difficult customer and he was looking at some jewelry and he was jiggling his money in his pants and that just oh, I truly truly hate it well I ended up saying something to the guy about it I can't recall right now what it was but they'll flash their rings and jiggle their money and like trying to be mesmerizing and hypnotizing and that type of thing like so watch out for jewelry and um, even clothing that will take the truth out of what somebody's saying you know so god I wish I could remember what I said to that jerk hmm. might have been like don't look at me and your money doesn't impress me and put your ring in your pocket something like that you know don't know pretty close probably but yeah um, I'm not telling you to go out and um, verbally attack anybody that wears a ring I'm just telling you that the metal and the conduction of it and the, the um, yeah definitely conducting um, not only energy but brain waves and that type of thing and it can set you back like in your thoughts and whatever and that's what this dude was doing to Barbie in the gift shop so anyway I was probably in there buying cigarettes because they have natural tobacco like I smoke and um, I could get um, pre-rolled ones really cheap out of Virginia that the Native Americans um, it was, uh, hmm, can't remember the name of their company now. But yeah, all natural, all natural filters, all natural tobacco, nothing added, absolutely nothing. And 
course, there's nicotine, but, you know, um, still say I'll beat you in arm wrestling, and my lungs are fabulous, so um, I do have uh, sinus troubles, but so I breathe out of my mouth mainly, unless I'm doing um, actual breathing exercises, then I keep my keep myself fit like that. Um, let's see. Hmm. Oh, don't forget, they so try to get you with food. They so try to get you with temperature um, in their cars. Like if they'll turn it up, like they'll be all ready. Maybe they drank a frozen smoothie or something before they picked you up. But then they'll crank that freaking heat up and try and kill you up in there. And um, You know, if you are in a situation with somebody like that, they're going to do anything. So premeditating what they might do is a really good idea. Doug sees all of these, so I can tell you what he's going to do tonight when he comes in. First, he's going to expect that I cook something, which I did. I got a roast in the oven, and I'm going to make some crackle, Cracker Barrel mac and cheese to have next to it. And um, so that's what I'm having. But, uh, okay, so he's going to. I don't know about tonight. He is working out there, so um, he kind of starts late and works late, so he'll probably be hungry and maybe not say anything, but um, yeah, they, they'll they act like the food's not important to them when their whole personality is nothing but ravenous, you know, never enough of anything is what their trouble is. They can't settle for um, a peaceful day. They'd rather insert baloney so <sighs> let's see dealing with a female narcissist like a grandmother or a mother can be really difficult um, you don't want to hurt her because she gave birth to you or passed on your family line and you don't want to say nothing really nasty to them but you got to realize that if they don't have God in their heart and they're literally doing things to you, saying things that hurt you, saying things that don't sound right, um, you got to let them know about it. What would Jesus say? Well, Jesus might tell you, um, what you just said to me sucked and I don't, I'm sick and tired of having my feelings hurt, something like that. Um, he's not going to say, oh, good job, Joe. Uh, say some more things to me that are cruel and mean and you don't know what you're talking about, that type of thing. Go ahead. You know, goes for the women, too. Really does. And I sense some of you going through that. Um... Yeah, I've been through that a lot. I had uh, my mom knock my teeth in my mouth and said that I had started an argument and she set me up and then lied to my dad about it. So then I probably got whooped again. Not sure. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe he's seen the mark on me. I don't know. But yeah, put my teeth through my face. slap me so, and I was really little I was about mm, maybe seven eight pretty tiny I did try to put my feet against this wall where the door opened um, and she pushed her way in and my legs near broke and she got in there and started slapping on me and shit and then when my dad got home she told him that I had started talking back to her which wasn't true. She said something to me, and I answered her. So, But she didn't like it, evidently, what I said. Might have been like, I don't know, or in a minute would kill him, or just a minute. That killed him, because I was supposed to giddy up and go anytime they yelled, and, you know, not normal. Absolutely retarded, so. Mm -hmm. 
So I've had a lot of experience dealing with narcissistic women and um, on the other one that gave birth to me uh, had bisexual relationships and I didn't even like um, being in a room undressing. The, the feeling was odd and weird and icky to me because she was making everything natural in a sense that didn't seem natural, if you get what I'm saying. And I was even the kind of girl, like, um, I would go home and take a shower at for, after gym. Um, I didn't take showers very rarely at school with the rest of the girls. I just, I just couldn't deal with it. I didn't want to see them, and I didn't want them seeing me because I lived in the city, and there was like 4,000 kids in my um, junior high. Um, before I left it, but, uh, yeah, it wasn't a nice place. Um, could have been, I guess, but I don't know, whatever. But yeah, so I just thought I'd get on here and ramble a little bit and say hi to you and give you a couple tips and, um, oh, let's, oh yeah, talk about narcissists. My gym teacher, I was, um, having that time in the month and, uh, so I had to sit out and she was really cruel. She was, instead of letting me sit in her office or anything, she had me sitting on the cold concrete floor outside of the office. So then when I was on track, I waited until we were going around these lakes called Lake of the Isle. And I started running up ahead, running up ahead. And she's looking at me weird and all the other kids are behind me and I get way up ahead, way up ahead, and I turn around as I'm kind of pirouetting. I'm lighting a cigarette, and the look on that bitch's face, and I took off just sprinting around the lake and went home, and I thought, hmm, wonder when I'm going to tell the people at home now. Um, either way, no matter where I went, people treated me like shit, so it didn't, didn't matter if I was getting treated like shit out in public or at home. That's kind of where I was at in my life at that time. Um, probably about, I'm going to say 14. And then uh, I was 15. They put me in a Catholic girls' school. Um, it wasn't a reform school. It was just a, supposed to be a, um, they had cottages. We lived there. But because I kept running away. So it was my choice to be there or not. And um, not was how I did it. So I spent about, oh, I won't say a whole year. I'm going to say about nine months. And a friend of mine killed herself because the stepmom pushed her into it, literally. She took a bunch of pills. And her name was Michelle. We called her Mickey for short. And we used to roller skate through the tunnels underneath the Catholic girls' school to our cottage and around and stuff. And we'd grab hands and do like figure eight and, and swing each other around and then take off skating some more. And just the, the sweetest girl. And uh, oh, then after she died and I was upset, I had all these people and we had like group like group therapy. So we'd sit around like a bunch of morons and they started telling me how I should feel about Mickey dying and I lost it. I did. I um, Then I got in a little bit of trouble there. But So then I was on probation and I told her, I said, you got to get me out of here or I'm just going to run away again, you know. And that's when she helped me get emancipated from the state. She said, you get a job and I did as student teacher and she said then um we'll get you make sure you can find a place to live in an apartment and then you can go to the state and commission them to be um emancipated before you're an adult and it's like oh yeah that was great because then nobody is gonna be telling me what to do you know but yeah been a a wild ride. Quite a bit more to that story too, but just in short. Yeah, um, let me think. What do narcissists do? Da, 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 da. Okay, we covered the food and the temperature, the arguments. Um, 
definitely they do not like to have you looking good if it's your color they won't buy it <laughs> you know that type of thing um the insults uh which i don't really care about that's i'm confident um i could be dirty too but i don't i love everybody so i'm not looking to pick up any of their um, things in life although I do have trouble and don't take offense if you've been injured or anything but I I have trouble with fat asses lazy sloth type people that's like wow can't handle it and all narcissists love their sleep big time I notice Christians kind of will fast and they'll fast from sleep too not if you're working hard. Of course, you need your rest and your food and whatever, in big time, in a big way, especially nowadays, you know. But, uh, oh, yeah, and they sleep odd hours, too. And don't forget when um, you're sleeping, like, say, the, the Eastern Star Witches in Singapore, are uh, planning your demise and having dark masses wishing you dead in your sleep so it's not just in this country and then in this country they're wishing christians dead on the other side of the world they take turns night and day um so it is a constant barrage uh let's see Um, I guess, well, uh, let me see anything else. If I do get cut off, I'm, this is that other phone. It doesn't have a lot of apps on it. And my GoPro should be here tomorrow, I guess, from what they say. So maybe I'll learn it and then put a video up. Might take me a day or something or whatever. And, uh, oh, Oh, if you have pets, my poor animals, I am not kidding you. If you have uh, animals around somebody with a darker nature, the animal will suffer for it. Luckily, my animals are um, very well loved and cared for. But there are some odd training habits or lack of training habits that can actually endanger your animals or get your animal to literally annoy you when the animal knows better so they end up feeling very confused and every one of mine have had to go through that um i will never get another animal around a narcissist again and for god to want to take um his animals away from humans that don't treat them right is a really natural situation so i guess i'm very very lucky um, I would say my dog and cat and horse and Bob, Doug's cat, understands fully. In fact, Doug's cat is an angel. He literally puts up with the dark feeling coming off of Doug, and he's a trooper. He, he literally is an angel. He's the smartest little boy. You'd have to see it to believe it. So, um... Yes, yeah, he's good. And my horse uh, did some pretty dark stuff. Not intentionally, because um, they're kind of like a cat. They react like real quick with thought. So you got to be a little quicker. So like when you're training, you keep talking and they're like going up and you're like, no, no, no. Or whoa, 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 something like that. Keep keep on going well. Um, uh, I was going to say on that, let me think, what the heck was I talking about? <laughs> no, I got it in there. Um, well, I guess the moral of that story is just uh, with training for an animal and stuff. And I, Well, okay, that's what my point was. You basically end up like double training your animal, the animal. You have to teach your animal to 
um, take what somebody else is saying. So it's like they got trained first or two people in the household. It's got to listen to everybody. Well, you have to take control and make sure your animal knows that they listen only to you. And that's a really tough thing to do with other people involved. Um, yeah, the animals do suffer. That's a fact. Um, they pick up on odd feelings, you know. Oh yeah, Dusty being dangerous um, with getting a bad vibe and then she'd do something like freaky and it took like extra, extra to get her um, calm down. Uh, you, couldn't, you couldn't let her loose from a rope when you first met her. She'd be rearing up and she had been abused and uh, just hated him, hated him. Doug bent down in front of her to give her an apple, and I'm like, you better get up off, <laughs> off there. You don't go in front of that horse with an apple like that. That's silly. I said, you stand aside and reach out with that apple and watch your fingers. Put your hand flat and watch your fingers. <laughs> now, you can put an apple down in front of her, and you kind of got to watch your fingers still with any large animal like that, but... That wasn't what that was. She put her head down and her ears back and she went to kind of paw and it's like, whoa. Yeah, and I'm like, Dusty, I got her attention to give him a second to straighten. <laughs> it's like, whoa, uh-uh. So it didn't take much for her to be persuaded with a thought of dark. And so now she's, she's better like that, but she's got a pretty dark, narcissistic, personality and um, yeah, she just does but I earned her respect she loves me I love her we cried together well actually I let her put her head on my shoulder and boo-hoo after I built her her first house and she put her head over my shoulder and just was boo-hoo and tell me the whole world's problems and it's like oh you're poor you know, and then she knew I loved her, and I started singing to her, and she liked that. And then I put a fan out there for her to blow the bugs off and keep her cool, and she liked that. And I turned up the stereo so she could hear the music, and she liked that. <laughs> started making her a fire to keep the bugs off. She liked the smoke. It's like, yeah, she's a character. So, yeah, I um, thought I'd get on here and ramble a little more if I can think of something that might help somebody. If uh, you got a question about something that's happening to you, it probably happened to me. I might be able to help you out like that. Um, don't forget their words are going to be coming at you. It's, it's a given, you know. The only thing you can do is keep God in your heart while you're speaking or don't speak. And that is the hardest thing in the world. I blow my top and then I go sit by myself. It's like I lowered myself for shit. Literally. And that's telling it like it is. So, um, I don't do it often. Uh, outside pressures don't help, but I can deal with that too. Um, but I mean, I, I am so serious. Serious as a heart attack. If you're going to um, be cruel to people, even me, I don't care. Of course, like I told you, I will defend myself in every way. Um, well, that's sad, you know. Yeah. Well, I didn't hurt people when I was a nurse. I didn't hurt people when I was a 
student teacher, you know, that type of job and everything. But when I was drywalling, I would take and I love to not use the screw gun. I got one now, I love it, but I hated them there. I would do all the perimeter of the drywall, sink the nails in part way, and then once I got it over my head or up on the wall, I just beat the heck out of those drywall nails, sink them in like two and a half taps, just smack, smack, boom, and make it so it didn't break the drywall and make it just nice and smooth so I could uh, tape it up and sand it down, and I love that too making everything smooth, just a white out, you know, beautiful. But, um, yeah, I took my aggressions out when I was drywalling. That did help. Um, keeping busy does help. So, well, I'm going to say good night, and I love you, and um, I really do very much. And if you have uh, questions, I'm not, I'm not kidding. I don't know why... If somebody's watching me, is it valuable to you? Does somebody else need to hear what I'm saying? Because something tells me other people do. And it's not that I want, I'll never get money for doing this. I don't care. This is not why I'm on here. So I'm on here because I know what I've got to say. And other people are going through it. And it's important. So um, it's important to know how to not feel guilty about saying no to people that are um, entering your life with a bunch of crap. And that, that goes for out in public, too. I mean, you know, uh, I've had people, of course, they butt buy in all that stuff, but I'm like, how rude, you know, or pardon you. That's a good one. They look at me like, what? You know? And I've been known to say, bitch, or you fucking jerk, or, you know, whatever. Yeah, pretty straight up real. I can't stand my language. That's okay, too. Don't care. I get my aggressions out like that instead of pummeling somebody's head. I uh, swear. And I know God forgives me, and I do ask for forgiveness. So... Okay, one more time. Good night. I do love you guys, even you creeps. But I don't love you as much as I love God, and I don't love you as much as I love godly people. So, there's that. Good night, you guys.